Short Box Nation, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for being here. If you're new, welcome to the show. My name is Botter, and this is the Short Box Podcast, the comic book talk show that brings you the best conversations about comic books with the people that put their blood, sweat, and tears into making them. Today, I'm joined by freelance illustrator and cover artist extraordinaire, Jeff Takal. Jeff broke into comic Jeff broke into the comic book scene in 2013, providing painted covers for Marvel's Journey into Mystery, and since then, his unique style, which incorporates fine art, abstraction, and realism, has graced the covers of books from publishers like AWA, Marvel, DC, Image, Boom, and Heavy Metal, just to name a few. By the time this episode comes out, you can see his signature style on the covers of comics like Batman and Superman World's Finest Number 27, Penthouse Comics, and on as well as the 1 in 50 variant cover from Werewolf by Night number 1, which hit shops in August. Jeff is on the show today to talk about how he got a shot in comics, his process for creating some of the most unique and captivating covers out there, and what else he's got going on in his world. As a fellow Florida man and fan of his work since the days of him doing mixtape covers for underground Florida artists, I'm extremely excited to have him on the show, and I think he's someone worthy of a short box spotlight. So without further ado, let's welcome Jeff Tacal to the show. Hey, Jeff. Welcome to the show, man. Glad to have you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It was a nice intro, man. So thank you for that. No, absolutely, man. It's, it's, it's well earned, man. Well earned. You have been, you've been one of my, one of my favorite cover artists working in the industry. I think, uh, you got a very unique style and I think your covers stand out in the stands among, you know, the hundreds of books that come out every week. Um, so it's, it's nice to finally have you on the show. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, uh, Walking into a comic shop can be super overwhelming, and uh, to, to, like oh, yeah. said, to stand out on that shelf is not an easy thing to, to do, man. So uh, thank, I appreciate you recognizing that, and anybody else who does as well. For sure. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get this part of the way, just in case we've got anyone that is, is curious about what you got currently going on and how they can you know, get a hold of your art. What projects are, are you currently working on? I know that um, some of the solicitations I saw were things like uh, you, you got a cover for Batman Superman World's Finest coming out. I think you've got a cover for uh, Red Light, which is through AWA. And then uh, obviously that Werewolf by Night cover coming out in August. Do you have anything else lined up? Yeah, the the World's Finest and the AWA books, though, I've finished those. Um, you know, I've, I've finished the work uh, before they're solicited and, and released. So I've finished those. But yeah, but those are coming out in shops uh, currently. The Werewolf by Night, I literally just turned that in yesterday. Um, but oh, awesome. I know they like solicited, like my name will be mm -hmm. on the list or whatever beforehand. So yeah, that was a cool one to do. Um, um, I won't spoil it, what's on the cover. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the main characters are on the cover, but but that was fun for me to do. Um, and then I'm working on some some, some stuff for Boom um, that I, I oh, can, yeah. I can. it's two projects. I can talk about both of them, but I want to leave one as a surprise. Um, yeah, uh, please. The other one, the other one's really cool. The other one is like a horror anthology of like a like a compilation of short horror stories um, that Boom is is putting out, which is super interesting. And they asked me hmm. to do, they asked me to do a cover for that. And the editor, man, this, um, this guy Bryce is is really cool. You know, he he wanted me to do something real um, like sp specific to me, and I had this really weird dream like a, a little while ago. And I, I wanted to do something with it, and I kind of sketched it out and sent it to him. And I told him it was like a, based on a dream I had. It's it's like borderline horror, weird fantasy surrealism. Um, but oh, man, sign he, me up! Yeah, sign me up! He, he was all about it, so that's cool. I'm doing that. I'm doing a Power Girl cover. I'm doing. Um, I just finished the World by Night, the horror one. This other one for Boom, Power Girl, and. Um, Oh, and then I'm doing another penthouse cover, which is which is really cool. So I'm doing those professionally, and then man, I, and then I've been working on my own story for years now. I wrote a story, and I'm turning it into a graphic novel. So anytime I have free time, that's my go-to. And um, yeah, I don't know when that's going to be out. I mean, every year I say it's going to be out next year, but um, <laughs> my problems are so amazing because I just keep getting cool gigs that I don't want to turn down. Yeah, that's why I can't get to it. So. Yeah, so I always got a lot on my plate, which I'm so thankful for, um, and and I just do my best. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, I'm glad to hear an update on that uh, the, the creator owned story because I, I was, um, you know, obviously doing a research for the show when I came across a 2018 interview, and uh, you had mentioned working on a creator owned story at that time, 
And uh, you mentioned you were going to be writing it as well as painting all the sequential panels inside of it. Uh, is that the same project that, that you're talking about now or, or has that kind of gone and, and shifted and changed? Oh, yeah, man. That's the only thing that I've spoken about as far as like a personal project for <laughs> so many years. Yeah. Um, yep, same one. Uh, every panel is basically painted. Every panel more hmm. or less looks like my covers, you know, maybe an abbreviated version, but it's insane. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into when I started it. I uh, Again, this, the whole story is based on, an, on another dream that I had. Um, hmm. and, and it's rare that I have these like vivid, very memorable dreams. But when I do, I, I like to kind of exalt them and kind of do something with them. And, uh, and hmm. I have, so I kind of developed the dream. It's not the exact dream I had, but I kind of adapted it and developed it into a story and, um, much different than the weird surreal horror dream I had, uh, <laughs> t completely different, but yeah, man, that's, that's yeah. what I've been working on. And, uh. I, I at one point I kind of had anxiety that I wanted to stress that I wanted to get it out and this and that, but I I just kind of given up on worrying when it's going to be out and just kind of letting hmm. it letting it flow out of me when I have the the, the time and and my life permits, and um and I feel like when it is ready it will reach the people that it's it's meant to reach and um and I just hope it's received well. Uh, yeah, that's it. No, nah, I, I, I can patiently wait on that. It sounds like a story that, that needs to come out, but has got to go through like its natural course. So I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll be on the lookout for that for sure. Now, now, Jeff, you have had like, you know, we're talking about, you know, these covers that you're working on and, and it's, you know, it sounds like you pretty much worked on or provided a cover or art for just about every publisher you could name out there. Do you personally have time to like to go into a comic shop? Are you reading like current comics? Do you, do you frequent uh, like a local comic shop? And if it's not comics, like what books are you reading? Like what type of entertainment are you enjoying when you're not working on comics? Yeah, I don't keep up with what's going on in the major publishers and stuff like that. Um, um, it's I've never really kept up with comics. What I will do is if there's an artist I really admire and they do like a like an arc, you know, um, I'll wait mm -hmm. till that's in a in a in a trade paperback and I'll grab that. And I love that stuff. Um, I like uh, finding old old stuff. I just found a bunch of old weird Mobius stories. I went on eBay and, <laughs> and, and bought and bought a bunch of those. Um, there's always cool stuff coming out. Like Ram V is putting out really cool stuff lately. He Man. Just come, he just comes yeah. to mind immediately, like the Layla Star stuff. Um, this new stuff that, that he's doing. Yeah. Dawn oh, Runner? Yeah, yeah. Man, I read that. I actually Insane. bought that issue one. I don't ever like just buy single issues, but I was like, wow, this looks so cool. So cool. The art's amazing. I think Cable, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's, that, he's amazing. Yeah. That dude is a beast, man. Like, hey, uh, I think I, I read a story that Ram V found Evan on uh, via Instagram. He had posted a, um, oh my God, uh, Evangelion. I, I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but I think uh, Evan had posted like, you know, an Evangelion uh, uh, artwork. And even Ram V was like, yo, I need this guy for this book ASAP. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, and, and, and the artistry is obviously next, just mm -hmm. next level, man. And, um, you know, I've been doing this for I've been I've been a I've been an art fan before I was an artist. So so as a child, man, like like art just always blew me away. So honestly, man, I'm I'm a little hard to impress, and and hmm. I like that. So when I see stuff that impresses me, it 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 it, it really connects with me a lot more. Um, I love hmm. like Dave McKean. You know, I love um, anything he does is is amazing. Um, old sink i mean sink cabbage is one of my favorites um for sure yeah man i can go on i mean i could just go on but yeah, yeah. but i'm not i don't keep up with the modern stuff and the modern stories unless something really kind of sticks out to me um but i you know to do my job i don't i don't need to um you know i'm given i'm given enough from my editors um wherever the story's at in whatever project mm -hmm. i'm working on to to do what i need to do and if i have questions my editors can answer that. I, I don't need to read the whole thing. I do with AWA though. Not that I need to, but AWA, um, I, I love that everything about that company. Um, Axel is, is amazing. All the editors yeah. are amazing. So, so they actually do come to me and they send me the script and they do ask me to kind of formulate the, the covers. 
Um, I just don't think that the bigger publisher, you know, Marvel, DC, I just don't think they they mm-hmm. need, they need that from me, um, which yeah. is totally fine. It's kind of like makes my job a little, a little bit easier. So um, I'm I'm kind of cool either way. As long as I have enough information about the cover to get my job done, um, that's, that's yeah, that's okay. Well, I, I guess on the topic uh, of you know receiving uh, work from from publishers and such, I, I think most comic fans would still be surprised to learn that it's seldom that a, a cover artist ever receives like a, the full script for the issue. And it sounds like maybe that's more common o- among like the big two. Uh, but you know, they might get a couple of notes, and 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 this is just kind of based on conversations I've had with you know other artists like uh, uh Declan Shelby had him on the show a couple of weeks ago and he explained like yeah I don't really get much in terms of a script I might get a few notes but you know my job is to produce an image that sells a book and with very little time at that and and I guess with with that in mind could you speak uh, uh if your process differs a little bit could you speak a little to that but also what kind of covers an assignment speak to you is it is it the character is it the creative team behind it is it the pitch or the publisher and the, and the pay and all that like what speaks to you when you're weighing cover opportunities? Yeah, it's all of the above. Um, it's a recipe. You know, um, most things in hmm. life are a recipe. Um, we may not like every ingredient, right? We may only need to like most of the ingredients. Hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a recipe. And there are there have been times where I may not care for a character, but the character is like doing something out of their wheelhouse in the story or they're going on some journey and they're in a new costume and they're learning some new skill and then now I'm in because it's the character's in. I may not have loved the con- the basic context of the character, but now they're out of their normal context and they're doing something cool and, and then that kind of grabs me. Hmm. Um, also deadlines i mean i've had to say no to awesome projects i literally just do not have to band with them the time to, to take on so again man it's a recipe it's like it's like how much work am i currently uh, undergoing is the character cool is the pay good it, it's it's it really is everything um but but yeah um um doing covers that reflect storytelling are always awesome but you re- you, you need you need more time for that, more time and dedication to do that. And generally with like variant covers, it is about just making the character look badass, selling the book, mm-hmm. making like an, a, a, like an awesome moment. Like the character is just in this moment. Um, I do try to, I'm totally fine accepting that this is like a pinup and there's no deep concept about it. That can be fun. It's not a big deal. Um, but if even if I do do that, I still try to do it in my way you know i still try to do it to where um it's going to be recognizable that yeah this is a pinup but it's by jeff decal you know it's like his 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 way of doing it um because it's just important to have our own voice man especially Hmm. especially in this day and age when there's no shortage shortage of artists and there's and it's just increasing so um um you know, look at other people's art for inspiration, take tutorials, you know, if you need to. But honestly, man, it's so important to to have to to speak from a place that is from ourself. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's how I feel about that. No, that was, that was really well said. And if if the goal of, you know, being a cover artist is, is to sell the book, make the character look badass, I think you excel at that in spades. And I've got a couple of, you know, personal favorite covers of yours. But I, before I share mine, I was curious to hear, are, are there any personal favorite covers that you've done that maybe hold special meaning to you or maybe that uh, uh, you got to exercise like a different muscle or, or do something really cool and, and out of the box of a character? Yeah, there's a few that stick out really. Um, you know, I, I use reference in my work and anytime I I. I don't think I've ever hired a model like someone I didn't know. Like they're all my friends or or family or people that live in my building. <clears throat> like, you know, um, so anytime I can use like friends and family as characters in my work, I love that. And that connects me more. And if I get a pitch or I get a, a project and I see the character, I immediately like go through the, my Rolodex of people in my life and my mind and i think who, who could be this character you know so one that sticks out i did um a couple of years ago i did a, a couple dune covers for boom and it was um like a the story was like a prequel to the movies and it was like a young leto atreides and i used my nephew huh. i used my nephew like 
for, for that because he was the right age at the time. Wow, that's cool. Um, yeah, there's a couple Catwoman covers I used. I used a friend of mine, um, and and those were fun. Um, and then as far as like out, outside of the box on like style, there was one Catwoman cover. It wasn't on my run with the from the main covers. It was one I did afterwards. It was like Catwoman uncovered. It was like a compilation. Man. Of- of some yeah. variant covers and this is really funny because i've told the story a couple times i went like it was the same same editor um just jessica the, uh, this girl jessica that works for dc she's she's great and um and i told her i'm like i'm like i i just did catwoman like pretty traditionally for our run and now i'm going to do this variant cover i want to do something a little weird a little dark you know um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. And she let me do it. And I just kind of did this kind of very abstract, elongated figure. And within the figure, there's a lot of like abstract shapes and stuff. And I, I really, I, ha- I have a lot of fun doing that. But the feedback was like, man, this, this isn't Jeff's best cover. I don't know what he was thinking, this and that. And it just made me laugh because, <laughs> because, because I approached that cover from like a more like fine art kind of Mm -hmm. um direction and that's a a lot of that is in me and that's a lot of my roots come come from more fine art um not not comic um but i i'm always trying to combine my influences and my styles and kind of find a balance so it was just funny to see comic fans like not receive that one well uh but then they did receive the other ones well because some of them i use more lines and more Mm -hmm. like realism and um, it's just it's just funny you know it's just it's just it was, it was just funny because because I, I, I do have I do have so many influences from graffiti to to to, to classic realism to uh, French impressionism to comics hmm. and, and um, yeah I'm always just trying to find an appropriate balance of all those styles for uh, each given project um, man I'm so glad you brought up the the catwoman uncovered because I will personally say it is one of my favorite covers from you because of those exact reasons that I think maybe uh, other comic fans don't necessarily like like you know I, I I no surprise on the show I you know I've come from a hip-hop background I love hip-hop I obviously that means graffiti with it being a, a core pillar of, of hip-hop and I think I see a lot of that in this cover with like the angle that you approached it some of the the, the, the cubism uh, uh to it like the, the just the overall structure uh and uh, i don't know it's it's it stands out to me it, it doesn't feel like a traditional comic cover and i think i can say that about your work in general is that it's it's really niche man like you're bringing all these you know all these influence that you just said to comic books and it, it leads me to my to my next question you mentioned in a past interview that your love of things like fine art, abstraction, realism, graffiti set you apart early in your career, but it also made you feel insecure because, you know, the comic industry at the time, and I guess to some extent even now, is very niche in style and, and work methods. Can you speak to how you overcame that, uh, that you know, that, that kind of, uh, um, uh, damn it, that, that insecurity and, and, you know, and do you feel like the industry as a whole has come to appreciate and accept more different styles and such i don't i don't think i ever over <clears throat> overcame it it's that hmm. it, it's that i was received well um and then that just made me more comfortable with it in this industry because yeah i have mentioned when i first got into the industry i was like oh man are, are they going to call me a fraud because i use reference hmm. and i'm into portraiture and and these things and um growing up i never i growing up i would go into the comic shops and i would just my freaking eyes would pop out of my head just looking at all (laughs) the covers and i didn't really read much uh but i would watch the cartoons so i would get Mm -hmm. the story from the cartoons and then i and then i'd get the covers and i'd collect the cards so i'd have like i'd have like an aspect of the comics that way and then i'd get the story from the cartoons but i was just so overwhelmed um so anyway my my point is is i didn't grow up drawing sequential art or like drawing in a very comic style um i always loved portraiture and and realism and and capturing likenesses i was cop i was drawing faces out of magazines and and copying my video game the characters in my video game manuals and drawing my friends i, I i've done i've done that like my whole life and and, and hmm. that's like why, why i'm good at it and um, I used to call myself, um, I got to stop saying this, but I used to call myself like a portrait artist that just works really hard, you know, because I always felt like I was just kind of because I was 
just consumed by like capturing someone's likeness, like taking like a human face and like scribbling some marks on a piece of paper and having it resemble the person that's like always, um, uh, I've just always loved doing that. And it's always a challenge and it's always so gratifying to, to capture someone's likeness. So anyway, bringing that into comics, it is rare. I mean, there's really only a handful of us um, that are doing that, and even less so when I first got into the industry. So yeah, I just, I just, it's not that I was insecure. I just, I just wasn't sure like how I was going to be received. But I mean, hmm. eleven, twelve years later, I am where I am, and um, and I just love all the people that love my work and that that do recognize it as kind of standing out. Um, and it's it's not something I ever really tried to do and i think that's why i think that's kind of where the success comes from you know of hmm. course i put in the work and of course i i i'm, I'm diligent and I'm, I'm interested and i'm curious and i'm always trying new things but i didn't really have to like work at i didn't have to like put effort into trying to like fit in and i think that's where we fit in the best and i think that that's really important is to accept the places where we may desire we may have some desire um that we want to go to but sometimes we're just not meant for it you know we're meant for something else and i think embracing that and and finding that you know it's very difficult for people to find that um so like i kind of started off this whole monologue saying is like um i'm just appreciative that i was accepted and 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 people did like what i was bringing to comics even though it wasn't something um that 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 you that tends to be common I guess. Yeah. I, th I think one of my, I had a chance to, uh, you know, meet you at uh, C2E2 and I was exposed to maybe the, my first time seeing this cover, but you got a cover of Inferno Emma Frost and you've got Emma Frost on the cover. She's got like this badass coat on and, you know, she's, uh, she's kind of uh, posed up against the rail and there's something about, this is instantly kind of became one of my favorite covers because I feel like you captured the attitude, uh, the, the style as well. I think you've got a, a knack for like style and, and clothing and uh, just the expression and overall. Um, y you've mentioned that, you know, you're using, you know, families and uh, family and friends a as models for some of these covers and references. Like, do they understand, I guess, the the significance of like, hey, you're going to be, you know, I'm using you as a reference for a cover that is going to be seen by, you know, thousands of people. Like, do they think it's pretty cool? Or at this point, are they like, oh, my God, Jeff is asking me to pose again for another cover? No, they, uh, they, under, they it, they're fine. Uh, <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> they, uh, not every single one is a family or, or a friend. Like, sometimes I will, mm -hmm. you know, I'll find a photo online and I'll, I'll, I'll like the look of, yeah. of, of a model or something and I'll kind of like borrow the likeness. It's not, it's not going to be exact. Or I'll look at a few different faces and I'll kind of like make my own more or less. Um, and that's kind of what I did for that, for that Emma. She, she's based a lot on the girls in Miami. <laughs> like that's Man, they, I was, okay. That's they, I, I was, I, that's dude, I wanted to bring stand, that up. You know, like they look like that and they yeah. stand around looking like that with those frigging glasses <laughs> and all that. You know? <laughs> And then, um, Yo, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I wanted to find a way to work Miami, but that is the vibe. I, and maybe it's because I know that, you know, you're a fellow Florida man, you, you, you live in Miami, but there is something so uh, th the way you manage to bring your environment into this cover. And really, I think it applies to a lot of these covers, you know, like especially the ones that you've got, you know, female characters on there uh, or women characters on there. There's a certain sassiness, and you know, and I use sassiness uh, loosely, but like a, a certain sex appeal sassiness to it that feels very Miami. Even some of your lighting to me too gives me like you know neon nightlife kind of club, you know, club vibe. But it, it's elevated. And if you don't mind me asking, like, how does obviously you know Miami find its way in, into into your work? But I also know Miami, you know, is, is known for its its graffiti culture. You know, you got uh, Wynwood area, you got uh, Art Basel. Like, would you agree that um, uh, the Miami culture and, and maybe even specifically like the graffiti culture finds its way into your artwork, both subconsciously and consciously? hundred um, percent. But if I grew up somewhere else, then it would be that stuff that would be in my work, hmm. you, you know, and, and that's and that's like a big point that I was saying kind of in the beginning of the interview is to bring our voice to our work. If you're hmm. looking at a lot of other people's work and stuff like that, or or you're looking at a lot of work that's 
like if you're a comic book artist but all you're doing is looking at other comic book art like it's gonna the like it's gonna be de- derivative and 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 hmm. and people are gonna kind of <laughs> notice that even if it's like subconscious and by noticing it that may mean overlooking it because it just kind of is a little more homogenous so um hmm. i'm a big fan of like cross genres like um like west world where it's like western meets like high tech hmm. futuristic yeah. stuff and that's just one example but i really like when like it's like multi-genre uh elements that create a kind of something new like like dune even like the new like the like the new i was dune. just about it's to like, bring that up yeah it's yeah. like high high sci-fi tech but they're like really poor almost Heady, they look deep. right you know like yeah. yeah i mean they live in the desert so it's like they need like high tech but then they almost look hmm. like you know vagabonds you know so hmm. um so it's it's so and that and it works because of that and it's beautiful you know it's like it's it's really something that we don't see often um so anyway i'm going off on a tangent but yes you know <laughs> like when i get a character i'm like yeah she's like this bad bougie chick you know and there's no short there's no there's no sh- <laughs> like emma yeah. and that's who emma frost is at, at least to me yeah. and then there's no shortage of for sure. where i live so that was not a challenge for me to be able to uh, create right. the look of that character and i do love fashion i do not even for myself but just like looking at cool fashion mm-hmm. like, like alexander mcqueen the stuff that that he did oh um, yeah more, more when he was alive uh, more of what that brand was when he when he was alive um just bringing the elements that he brought into fashion like were so cool yeah. And I just really love and respect that kind of stuff. And and he's just one example. I mean, there's there's amazing, cool avant garde fashion nowadays. And um, and I just I just think all that stuff is cool. So I was kind of going like like I I like I had a um, you know she it, she has a certain these all these characters have a certain costume. Um, but if I can take some liberties here and there, um, that's really nice. And especially when my editors kind of let me do that. As long as the character, as long as you know it's the character, you can. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do a little something with it, and I and I try to do that whenever I can. Yeah, for, I mean, once again, for sure, you're Emma Frost. You nailed it, and and I, I'm I'm really and, and I'm I guess I'm honored to hear that my thoughts and, and I guess uh, um, ideas about why I enjoy your covers and why they feel like there's a, a real world connection to them is validated. Hearing that you do pull from the real the real world, your your you know references, friends, family, and, and where you live, so. Uh, I think it just elevates your artwork in my eyes even more. On the topic of of Miami, um, and maybe working back to you know your early beginning story goes that you got your shot at working in comics by stumbling upon a Marvel editor when you're at SuperCon, and I understand it was like the first local convention in Miami that you ever bought a table at. C- can you take us back to that moment and like what sticks out about that memory in hindsight? Uh, like what was in your portfolio? What what work or examples had you done to prepare for that moment? And and how did that interaction go? Yeah, so I had I had been to SuperCon just as a spectator, just going to walk around before, and then that year I just said, you know, hey, I I, I had zero comic book work. Um, I had kind mm-hmm. of like tossed the idea around with some friends. Hey, it'd be, hey, man, I'd love to like work for Marvel or do some comic book stuff. And they're like, oh, you don't, you need to draw Wolverine. You need to draw the characters. You need to have that in your portfolio to show the editors. And I'm like, really? Uh, man, I don't have anything. This was maybe 2011, 20, 2012. <laughs> um, maybe even before that. Um, but anyway, so I didn't. It was all just like my own personal paintings, kind of like gallery looking stuff, like weird avant garde female figure stuff um so i got the table they put me in the back corner next to the bathrooms facing the back <laughs> wow. facing the yeah. wall facing the wall it was like the worst space ever um but hey man like how you do it's like you got to do that so For sure. um, so you know i'm sitting there not a lot of interest and i'm walking around and i asked um you know i asked someone hey you know how can I work for Marvel? That'd be cool. And then they said, Oh, there's a, there, there's actually an editor here doing portfolio reviews, you know? So I went to the table and it said, you know, review Saturday from noon to whenever. And I'm okay, whatever. So I got my, got some prints together. It was just prints. I had to show nothing special, really no preparation. Didn't even, never been to a portfolio review ever. And, um, but I went and, um, Lauren Sankovich, uh, Gave me my shot. She gave me my first shot. I, I sat there. I, I went through my review. Maybe took not longer than ten minutes. Um, she was pretty 
stone face, straight face, didn't really show hmm. much emotion, which was, um, which was, I appreciated that. Um, but I did recognize uh, some of the couple adjectives she used to describe my work. Um, I kind of got the vibe that she liked it, but didn't want to kind of say too much. And um, she asked me for my card uh, if I had contact info before I left, and I, I gave her my my card. And she emailed me like a couple weeks later, and she she uh, they were redoing the whole creative team for Journey into Mystery, changing the mm-hmm. changing it from Kid Loki to Lady Sif, changing the writer, changing the cover artist. Everything was changing, and um, I just I met her at that moment, and that was that wow. was that was the moment. Where, you know, we can get into esoterical stuff you know um, where we could save that for another time but that was that was my moment and um damn thanks thanks to her and thanks to me for putting in decades of work and this is and i say this a lot it's like it sounds so easy oh i just sat down at a portfolio review and she gave me a shot well i worked for about 25 years to get my work to look a way that she respected and, and appreciated it and so um you know, it's like they say the whole thing with the with the overnight celebrity or whatever. It's like, yeah, you're just you're just you're just finding out about some some musician, some celebrity overnight, but they've been working a long mm-hmm. time to get where they're at to to be in your scope. Um, yeah, so so that was that. that you know, it, and thank you for sharing that, uh, <clears throat> and thank you for sharing that because throughout, I guess the, throughout the interviews I've read and, and research I've done. You, your attitude and, and perspective on, on and I'm glad that you highlight that part where it's like, look, you're just seeing, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg. You're not seeing all the years that, that I put into it. And, and to me, uh, your story and, and, and outlook on your career and the work that goes into it is kind of um, I, I guess I, I think about that, the that that saying, uh, you know, luck, I'm sorry, opportunity is I'm sorry, luck is preparation and opportunity when the, those two things meet. But like, you got to be prepared for when like that door swings open to, to go through it. And uh, I understand that, you know, you end up getting this opportunity to do the covers for Journey into Mystery, which sounds like it was like the, the perfect timing, right? It sounds like, you know, they're bringing in fresh blood, new writers, creative team. And it was, you know, opportune to also maybe bring in a, a new look for the, for the overall covers. But it, that wasn't, you know, you, you get that cover, but it wasn't like the overnight success. You weren't like getting a bunch of jobs. You weren't like a, you know, Marvel stay on. Like, uh, I understand that you, you know, you spent the next four years, like really hustling and doing the convention circuits and, and making those connections and, you know, getting your name out there even more. And I, I guess I, I would like to hear you highlight that about like that process that even though you get an opportunity to do a cover, it doesn't mean that you're in all the way like can you speak to or maybe even give advice to any aspiring artists or aspiring uh, comic creators who are showing up to conventions with the intention of getting in front of you know marvel or dc editor to to show off their portfolio like do you have any advice in terms of maximizing uh uh, time and effort uh at, at conventions like smart ways to go about you know trying to do what you do yeah, so she she left Marvel like very shortly after that project ended. I think I did two sto- I did two story arcs for that book, and then hmm. she she left. So it's so like she was my it. She was my foot in the door. I hadn't worked with anybody else at Marvel, um, so she left. And now what do I do, right? But I had enough. But those covers gave me enough momentum to where I could afford the travel. Uh, a little bit better to to go to travel outside of Florida and go to conventions and that's what I did and um, and I did meet editors I think the the next uh, bunch of editors I met was from Valiant and then I did did some work for them Hmm. and then it was just a snowball man it was just a really amazing snowball effect um, of me just continuing to do the legwork and to meet my opportunities you know um, we all the opportunities that that come into our lives, they're on their way right now. They're they're each at different um, points of being created. Um, and as we go about our reality and create our karma and make our decisions and meet the people that we meet, I mean, those opportunities are like beginning to, to manifest and they're on their way to us. And I see a lot of people um, that have some preference or some desire for the way they want their life to go or the things they want and that's that's great you know i mean everything that exists in this world exists because 
of preference and desire, the desire to build something, the desire for make some new technology that help people do stuff that's great. But a lot of times people miss the things that are on their way to them because they have their head turned in some other direction trying to reach for something that's kind of outside of their hmm. the reality that's kind of being created not for them but but by them with God in the universe or however you want to kind of conceptualize that um, so I really think it's important to kind of just surrender to the stuff that's coming to us and to kind of respect that and to look at that as more meaningful. Um, like if I would have been like, oh, I met these Valiant editors, but I don't want to work for Valiant. I, my goal is to work for DC, so I'm not going to take mm -hmm. those jobs and keep going to DC. No, the I met the Valiant guys and they were awesome. Like Dinesh to this day, Dinesh, Dinesh is, 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 is awesome, you know, and and I did work for them, and then those covers led to something else, and then this leads to something else, and I so 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 that's a big advice um, that I think is really important is to really take what is what we don't have to reach outside of our uh, like the circumference of our I don't know I'm trying to think of some metaphor you know if you're straining to reach it's probably not for you but if all you gotta do is kind of put your hand out and catch it then I think that's really important and then once you catch it. Now you got to do something with it. So I'm not saying it's like easy and it's just going to come to you when everything's, just, you know, you don't got to do anything. You got to do the work. Um, so I think that's that's, yeah. that's really important. And, and, and that's what I did. And I don't really give advice. I don't tell people anything that I don't do or I don't believe in. So, that, so that's, that's what I do. And, hey, you know, if you got some crazy goal and you're just um, tunnel vision into this one goal and you don't want to do anything else and that's how you want to live your life, do it. Like I'm not telling anyone to do anything. Uh, I'm just saying what's worked for me and what I was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, and then another piece of advice, if for, be, you know, beginners or people trying to break into the industry, work for free if you can, because once you do and work for independent publishers and work for people that you recognize are working hard as well, because hmm. once you do a cover or uh, whatever you're going to do, once you do your artwork for them, now they're working for you. Now they're soliciting your work. Now they're marketing their them marketing their books and their project. You just did that for them. So now they're sharing your work. And and that's important, man. Like we need to, we need to work for people who are working for us. It's 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 all symbiotic. Um and and I did that. I mean my first covers before Marvel, I think, were for Creature Entertainment, which is a an indie an indie publisher in miami and i'm they're my friends to this day they're my friends to this day john uyola um um and i want to shout out mike broder who who used to used to own supercon and now owns um the galaxy con franchise he owns supercon and he put me in the back table facing the wall i didn't know him that well i didn't know him that well <laughs> yeah. at, at, for that convention but he's a dear friend of mine today and he has helped so many people and what he's done for the comic industry is is almost uncomparable um, and I'm friends with them to this day. And but back then, back then he put me in the corner facing the wall, and 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 John paid me like a hundred dollars for a cover that I did that blew up their company, right? So it's like, and I'm hmm. still friends to this day. So like we have to kind of know where we're at and and our capabilities in the moment, and um, um. And just be humble about that and and not just not compare ourselves or what we think we should be or what other people are telling us we should be and, and, and all these things, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of I'm kind of. No, I, I, dude, you, you are on a, a great train of thought. And I, I think you might have given me the, the, the sound bite for this episode. That was really, really well said. I appreciate you highlighting and spotlighting humility but also like uh, relationships and working uh, relationships I, I think what you said about you know doing you know like doing work for free right it, it i think for any artist that's one of the you know they'll be quick to tell you like nah you, you don't do no work for free you know like free don't pay the bills but i love that you you added the caveat working for free for people who are working just as hard that's because you know they're which I think is solid advice. Um, so thank you for that answer. I, I want to, I guess, and, and ask I'm sorry it. to cut you. I'm yeah. sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead. That's why we're talking right now. 
because I recognize yeah. you. I, I I told you I went to your page. I looked at your podcast. I saw your I saw how um how in, you're inspiring, man. Like you're you're you're. No, thank you're, you, thank you're, you. You're doing your you know so 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 that's why I need to talk to you, man. Like to to really just just kind of recognize that. And and I, and another quick caveat, like hey, if you're if you got if you got kids and bills and yeah, you you can't work for free. Like I get that. I'm I'm talking sure. about the young the younger artist that's trying trying to break in. That, mm-hmm. That's where I was directed at because because for when sure. I was doing that, I was living at home and I was like 26 years old, right? So 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 I'm fortunate that I was able to, to do those things at that time of my life. Today would be more difficult, right? Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah, so, you got to come correct now, right? Decal yeah. is a is a household name. Yeah. You put so, in the, but you put in the work for it. Yeah, you put in the work for it. And it yeah, right. And it's just about context and, yeah. and like the appropriate context for the appropriate time in our life and, a, and mm-hmm. our appropriate capabilities and 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 all these things. So um, well said. Yeah. So I I guess I got to ask this and and I ask this re- respectfully, but but why comic books? Because you mentioned that. You had a portfolio, uh, you know, you had worked in tradition, you had did traditional oil painting, you had did illustrations for, for magazines, you had did album covers, you know, you were into the graffiti scene. Like, what was the appeal for comic books? I imagine like you understood early on that like, hey, this is not a, at the time at least, you know, it's not a very lucrative business and, and, and it's hard to get in here. Like, what was the appeal for, com- to, what was the appeal to get break into the comic book industry? And I guess what would you say is has been the coolest or most standout opportunity that you've been able to enjoy because of comic books, whether it be, you know, a travel or meeting a hero or idol? Like what, what is your relationship with comic books and, and why does it continue to drive you? So that's directly goes back to what we were just talking about, about meeting the opportunities that are trying to meet us. Um, hmm. I did I did uh, album art. Uh, for like musicians before I did comics, I did some editorial stuff for like um, like uh, some local newspapers and magazines. I did gallery work, so I I, I was doing all murals. I, I was doing all these different things. Comics stuck; they just stuck because hmm. of of how I was received and the fans that appreciate my work and the editors that continue to give me work. So so I mean. It easily could have just been, yeah, I did some covers and I tried, I hustled, I went to conventions, but I couldn't, couldn't get more work. And I guess I got to move on. Like that could have been my path, um, but it wasn't. Uh, I continually got the jobs. I got the appreciation, which I'm just so, so moved and appreciated for. And I just c- continued on. And, and again, now I'm talking to you in 2024. So it's like, um, so comics wanted me to stay basically um the fans the editors yeah. the projects they, they they wanted me to stay and i'm still doing it and i fucking love them man like i love comics as a kid, you know? <laughs> there we like, go i grew no up said. it wasn't something like i had said earlier it wasn't something i thought i could ever like do and make a career but i it, i i'm totally okay doing it you know that seeing that i'm able to do it um yeah 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 like i had mentioned before as well like i have all these influences like gallery art um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, book covers uh, uh album covers but this is this is what stuck and again yeah. drawing like divine godlike superheroes fighting and looking emma frost looking bad and bougie on a you know, whatever like I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm 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 okay drawing that stuff so it's fun. yeah for so sure it's, so it's fun so, so god I, bless you so, man so so not only has the industry asked me to stay i've chosen to mm-hmm. stay because i love it so it's very fun Damn right. very endearing um and then yeah man the the travel i think that's been the most like just life-changing part of being in this industry and something i never expected um that i would do i mean i've been to europe for this stuff i've been all over the country for this stuff um and the you know huge thank you to all the conventions that have me as a guest and um and asked me to come and cover my expenses i mean that is just so humbling to me i mean i just i mm. still feel like a kid just drawing in his room because no one else invited me to go out on the weekend you know like i still feel like that um kind of in my heart so to have these opportunities where these big companies or even um indie independent uh conventions like heroes con i mean like for them to ask me to come and 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 help and help me uh, pay cover expenses and, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm happy to, to do a piece for the, for their auctions or to speak on their panels and do all that stuff, man. So 
that's just been amazing, man, and, and really life changing. And I get asked often, like, oh, you know, because I grew up in South Florida and I still live here and I love it. And I get asked a lot, oh, do you want to leave Florida and travel? And and yeah, I do. It's cool, but being able to like, kind of live my dream and make my artwork, and then also to travel as often as I do, I, it kind of like really um fills that void of like hmm. that that restless void of like oh i gotta get out of here i gotta i gotta move somewhere i don't really feel that because i am so fortunate to be able to travel um for work uh, i mean it's like really work vacation because I'm, I'm 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 working the whole weekend drawing and doing commissions yeah. with people but i'm seeing friends i'm enjoying myself um so yeah man just this whole my, my whole career has just been like a really surprising um bountiful blossoming fruit of a lot a lot of labor and um and I'm, I'm happy to do the labor um damn right if it creates anxiety sometimes and i fucking hurt my back because i'm drawing so or whatever it's like hmm. i just heal i'll deal with it i'll heal because i because i because i know i will heal like, we'll, we, hmm. we give it enough time and enough um love for ourselves we'll, we can heal from from most things um, so i just try, man I just, try, I just try to look at everything like that jeff I, i'm so glad that that, that, you, that you're in comics and i'm glad that you know it, the the cult, the medium and the industry embrace you as such because I I think your artwork and your style uh, adds you know uh, legitimacy adds uh, adds, a, adds a certain flair to it that I don't think is mimicable I don't think we've seen your style done quite like like you've done it so I I, I appreciate you know you being in this space and also Florida for life all right. <laughs> Like, you know, um, uh, granted, I understand all of the problems that come with being in Florida, but hearing you say how comic books has given you the opportunity to like scratch that itch of, of traveling and, you know, uh, meeting people like that, that, re that really resonates with me as, as someone that, you know, I don't make mo any money from the podcast and any money that I do make goes right back into production and hosting and, and all the costs that come with it. But the, the saving grace and what I love about doing this is the opportunities like it gives me a reason to i mean hell go to chicago and meet awesome people like you and new york and and all of that um and maybe one day i'll be able to uh go to europe for comics specifically but um yeah that really resonated with me and uh, and i wanted to ask you know uh, you, you mentioned going to conventions in, in europe and being invited there i know that comic books the I don't know if it's just increased or maybe my awareness of comic conventions in Europe has increased, but it feels like, you know, that is starting to become like a hot spot for creators to go over there and show their work and they're getting invites. Do you, what is the reception like in, uh, uh, at conventions in other, in other countries, whether it be Europe or, or, or other places? Cause, cause I have this, I guess I have this thought that your artwork May, like does it resonate a lot more over there like i don't know there's something about your artwork with it maybe it's the the, the, the traditional uh illustration or the the traditional art aspects uh, uh influences but like does your artwork resonate maybe uh, special over there in a different way that maybe isn't really appreciated here i can't speak too much on it because i don't have a lot of experience i've only done two uh shows in italy i did the nerd bologna show and i did the lake como show and i only did each of them hmm. one time and it, and the the lake como show i mean that that was amazing um but as far as like seeing how my work was received it was a little bit more um cool for the bologna show because that was in like a like bologna you know, the Lake Como show is this just this divine, amazing, high brow, like art festival kind of deal, um, which just incredible. The like everything about that show is insane. But the Bologna show was more like a traditional Comic Con in like I don't think Bologna is like a, a huge city. It's a it's a beautiful, nice city in, in Italy, but um but I had fans there like that didn't even speak English and that was crazy. Damn, that was like crazy that's awesome. for me. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, like the Lake Como show is more like a high end collectors, but the but the Bologna show is more just kind of like the everyday younger kind of comic fan, and and it was nuts, man, for me to see that I actually had had fans there. So so that's all I could speak of, and and it was great. But I mean, Europe has its its, its own world of convention. I, I mean, like French like like French artists and French comic books are amazing. Like like the styles are beautiful out there, and they have their own circuit. Um, and and they have i mean like every country in europe at least has one comic-con and they have that's their own world out there as far as artwork 
Um, yeah. Um, like American comic book art is, yeah, it's a huge part of comics, but it's it's not it's not everything at, at all. Yeah. Um, and I guess I, that's what I was getting at is that. You know, you brought it like Mobius and you just brought up uh, the French comic scene. I know in France, the reverence for comic books is on another level. I think they call it like the, the ninth art or, or something to that effect. And I guess the I guess what I was trying to get at is like, did you notice that? Did you feel like a different sense of reverence among the fans or a different culture among the fans that that is different than here, uh, different than like conventions here? Um it's hard for me to boil that down like like yes but again i don't have a lot of experience like i've never done anything in, in france like I've, I've been to paris okay. once for a vacation but i've never done anything professionally there so it's i can't i don't really want to speak too much on it but but they okay. do they oh man again um you know this is kind of funny i just i just got this super old book um it's a Marvel book. It's Mobius did a story with Stan. Stanley wrote the yeah, story. And Silver Mobius, Surfer. That's exactly right. I just found mm -hmm. out about that and I just bought that. And it was so, so cool. And what, but Mobius, he, he wrote like this whole kind of synopsis on how he was feeling about how he met Stanley, about how the project came about. And, and, and he did mention like a couple of times that like the French fans were going to like look at this work in a different way because Mobius did want to kind of like tailor the style to look more like an American comic book, even though he says it'll still be Mobius, but it's going to be mm -hmm. a more American comic version of Mobius. And just hearing him um, just reading and understanding that he kind of knew that he kind of knew that there's these two kind of versions of, of, of comics and he has to actually like try to look more American in that kind of work was interesting um to read so so i really think like that kind of kind of says it all like it's not like there are these two totally different things and they're appreciated or received in two totally different ways but there is a kind of delineation between like american and european styles and, and preferences and appreciations um, hmm. I, ju I just can't speak like a whole lot on it no for sure i think that was a solid answer overall and for anyone curious uh the the silver surfer story we're talking about silver surfer uh parable uh parable parable yeah parable so. which yeah which is one of my favorite marvel things ever just because you know mobius brings such a unique look to silver surfer and and just humanity in general it's it's a must read comic book for for anyone that's into marvel or just art in general um uh, jeff i want to ask you a question in terms of your graffiti background because I know that that informed your work like early on, and and even to the point that uh, you had a, a you had a moniker like a graffiti moniker Decal as well. You just used your last name. Is that correct? It's not my last name. It's it's what I. It's my graffiti name. It's my graffiti. Oh, name. okay. Yeah, it's not my last name at all. And um, yeah, I'll tell the story briefly, but it's kind of ironic um, because it's the same reason I kind of stopped telling this story is is uh you know my name's jeff but then decal was like my graffiti name and when i was younger all my friends knew me as that so now fast forward i'm gotta make my website and i'm starting to do illustration and stuff and yeah, the no branding one kinda, no one no one kind of knows my real last name so i'm like oh, i'll just do like jeff dash decal like my two first names and then i decided mm -hmm. that the dash would be a little uh too confusing so i'll just do jeff decal didn't really think much of it and then as i'm like getting doing more industry work people thought it was my my last name and I would tell them, no, it's not. And I would tell this exact story. And then I just got tired of telling this fucking story. So I just, it's just my name. Um, and that's Fair just enough. How, how it kind of came to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I started doing graffiti and I, and I don't, you know, what you say, um, you know, like graffiti influenced my style. I, lately, I've kind of been thinking, I don't know if it's that or if it's the other way around. I don't know if I was attracted. Hmm. I don't know if I was attracted to graffiti because I already kind of had like a weird style, a weird like kind of like angular, linear, like stick, you know, expanded, you know, kind of way that I would approach things and graffiti kind of like fit into that. So I was attracted to it or it's probably a little bit of both, you know, then doing graffiti, like all the angles of the letters and all that kind of increased all that. But, um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not as in, influenced by it anymore. Cause I haven't, I just, I don't practice it. Um, 
basically at all almost anymore. So, um, um, and it did take me like a while. I remember, um, really like, like my noses were always really long and like my hmm. cheekbones kind of stuck out too far. So it took me kind of like a while to kind of, kind of sh- shave away the graffiti influence to kind of get my figures to be a little bit more, more accurate. Right. But at the same time, embracing my uh my 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 roots right and kind of like yeah. not totally getting rid of it but just kind of whittling it down to where it was something a little bit more um to, to where my style just fit to where i kind of wanted it to go uh a, a little bit more um but yeah i don't deny or ever um um uh, hide a uh, hide the graffiti influence it's, it's something yeah. that definitely is a part of part of my my upbringing and and uh, and responsible for a lot of my 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 social life and and the way I see the world and and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. Well, well, I'm glad uh, you share that and you basically answered the question I was going to ask. Uh, it sounds like early on it, that influence was maybe a little more apparent, um, uh, a little more apparent then, but. I guess let it be known to anyone, uh, you know, future uh, podcasters or interviewers. The story is done, right? You got the story about the last name. Call it a wrap. Uh, and I guess to, to pivot from that, uh, I, I guess, Jeff, I'm, I'm curious because you, you brought up a couple of names in terms of influence, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, uh, Mobius, etc. If you had to do the difficult task of, of creating a Mount Rushmore of your all-time favorite artists, whether it be from comic books, traditional, graffiti, etc., like w- what are some names that would be on your Mount Rushmore? Uh, like your, you know, what are your top four favorite, I guess, comic book or top four favorite artists out there? Can't do it, man. I, I can't. I'm not going to. I'm going to name a couple names, but they're not like the top best ever because I love so many genres of art and so many time periods that it's just impossible. Um, but yeah, That's fair. Bill is on there. Um, um, and I guess I should add the caveat that, uh, you know. I think this is a question that obviously will change depending on the mood you're in, the day that you know you're being asked this. But I guess in the moment, what are the the names that come to mind? With the caveat that this isn't a definitive list, that this is malleable depending on a bunch yeah. of different circumstances. But for right now, like, what are the names that that come to mind that you're like, okay, this is an artist that would absolutely be on my Mount Rushmore or, or has had that influence on me like that. Yeah, again, let's re- forget the Mount Rushmore thing. I'm not putting, I'm not going to do the pedestal thing. I'm just going to name sure. artists that I really like. Uh, like French Impressionism for me is, is huge. Um, so like Degas, Mary Cassatt, hmm. um, those are those are, those are are two of my favorites. Um, Caron Grant is, is a good friend of mine and a very big influence on me. And I, um, he was one of the first artists I met um, in my industry. Um, so I got to name him. Um, I mean, Bernie Fuchs is is, is amazing. Um, John Foster, um, hmm. Carlos Huante is another uh, another amazing, just incredible artist. Um, James Jean is one of them. Ashley Wood, I'm a big Ashley Wood fan. Um, oh yeah, my buddy Victor Kalachev is amazing. Topi, um, there's just so many. Um, if, uh, if I, I can I, add, I got hold on my Brian Stelfreeze. Got to throw him in there. I mean, yeah, Brian oh, Stelfreeze yeah. is amazing. Adam Hughes, um, Celia Call is a friend of mine, an amazing artist. Um, Tomer Hanuka. Oh, I could just keep going, man. Oh, Mar- what, what? I, last one, last one, and we will cut it off. Marco Djordjevic. Marco Djordjevic is my top. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. The, the Ashley Wood, the Adam Hughes, and, and the Marco uh, uh, name drops um, yeah, yeah. definitely makes sense w- w- with your style for sure. Uh, I guess l- let me add a caveat or um, uh, compound on that question here because uh, um, in a couple of interviews, you mentioned that one of your favorite aspects is, you know, w- when it comes to the opportunities you've gotten to enjoy with comic books is th- the travel, but you also mentioned, um, you know, being able to meet other artists and, and trade art and, you know, have pieces from like some of you know your peers and people that you work with what's the last i guess piece of art that you've received or traded uh at a convention or, or among like your peers uh, what is it uh, something i cherish a lot okay I'll, I'll let, let me name a couple i'm not gonna say the last one but some i cherish a lot sure i got a claire wendling drawing hmm. amazing i mean 
I can't even believe I have it. Uh, and she was wow. so cool about it. She made some post about it. She just like put, like had a bunch of drawings on the floor, made a post. She was going to some convention that I couldn't be at. And I messaged her and I said, I said, Claire, can I just buy something? I'm not going to be at this convention. And she was so cool. She sent me a PDF with like all these images. And she's like, yeah, Jeff, just picks the one you want. I'll give you a price. Oh, wow. And she did. And I mean, amazing. And, and, I, and I, I really cherish that drawing. That's dope. It's so beautiful. Um, then I have I have an original. I'm a big Eon Flux fan. I watched that as a kid in the '90s um, when M- when MTV when Liquid, yeah. Liquid Television was on. I mean, I was mm-hmm. I was way too young to be watching that weird, awesome show. <laughs> but, um, yeah, same. But same. I was so I have an original cell from Peter Chung from that from Eon Flux. It's oh like wow! On, it's like on the acetate, and he signed it. I have that. Um, I have a Rick Berry drawing, which is amazing. I met him. And he gave it to me. Um, um, I have a bunch of Quran grants drawings. We've traded a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I have a bunch. Damn, of, I, I have a bunch, bunch of Sinkevich drawings. I mean, my I love. I mean, he hasn't done this in so long, but he would. Um, for years, he he. I'd see him at conventions. He'd show up. He would just put a stack of loose drawings on the table. I would go through every single one. I mean, the corners, some of the corners were bent. There were stains on them. I mean, but that's who he is. Like, that's, yeah. and, and, and like, you want that if you're going to buy something from him. So I would just go through the stack of drawings. I'd pick out the ones I liked. I'd ask him for prices. He'd tell me. I'd put most of them back because they were too expensive. And then I would just buy, <laughs> I, would just, I would just buy the one oh, that yeah. I could afford. And I did that. I did that. I can't even count how many times I've done that. I have at least a dozen, Damn. a dozen drawings at his. Um, I do have a Dave McKean drawing. I met him the one year that I went to, um, that I went to um, Lake Como. And then that reminds me on that same time I met um, Travis Charette. So I got Travis Charette. I mean, it goes without saying. Damn. And we traded at that show. It was incredible. I mean, that was a moment for me. That was just incredible. He had heard of me, which is, fucking mind blowing just that Travis Shray hmm. heard of me and liked my work um, so we traded um, Space Girl drawings I did a Space Girl for him he did a Space Girl for me dude man I, hearing your enthusiasm for for art is is so refreshing man and, and I think it, it just kind of adds to uh, you know I, I think it just adds to my appreciation for your art because uh, you know it, it feels like you really appreciate you know the the connections uh, that, that that you've been able to make and, and the opportunities and i can only imagine how badass your studio is you know with all the art that, you, that you've just mentioned uh so thank you for, for sharing that listen and entertaining that question um I, i've got i've got two more questions but one of them is a question that was submitted via voicemail from one of your biggest fans uh he's also the owner of of the comic shop that I, that I frequent uh, that also sponsors the show is Gotham City Limit here in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, but he was elated to hear you'd be on the show and wanted to contribute to this conversation. So I'm gonna play this voicemail for you. Hey Jeff, Ben K, Gotham City Limit, Jacksonville, Florida. Here, thanks so much for taking some time to answer my question. Before I jump in. Just wanted to let you know on a personal level, we always joke at the shop about how I'm a little bit like the hair club for men president from the 90s commercials. I'm not just the comic shop owner. I'm a comic collector, too. And two of my favorite comics that I own from D.C. in my personal collection are your Green Lantern number nine variant cover that has the pack of lions coming out from behind Hal Jordan and your Flash 800 variant with the Flash racing alongside a cheetah. Thanks so much for making amazing artwork. Now here's my question. You wake up tomorrow and you're a mutant and your mutant power is all your artwork comes to life. What's the first thing you make after realizing this new power? I'll leave you to answer. Thanks so much for making amazing art. We couldn't do it without you. And remember, Short Box Nation, we'll always take it to the limit. You know, big shout out to Ben K from Gotham City Limit. Uh, always coming with the out of the box questions. That, that one was a really interesting one. Uh, but Jeff, how would you answer that one? Oh, man, I was smiling the whole time he was talking. That was hilarious. Um, yeah, he's dope. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Oh, that's 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 hard. That's hard. Um. <laughs> you know, uh, I, like uh, I, like uh, like like I have this like vague idea, but 
it's almost like like I wouldn't even want the responsibility and the power of what I would kind of say um, hmm. because yeah, it's kind of too because it's all about pers- perspective of like kind of the balance of how the world works and it's obviously not balanced for everybody when you zoom in but when you zoom out and you look at everything as a whole it's arguably you know even with all the suffering in the world i mean you know again this is everyone can view this differently but um yeah i don't know man i just would kind of want to bring a little bit more balance to the world but again Hmm. that's like a perspective that's like my own i'm i'm bringing that view to the world like nature is perfect right like you see you see a fucking deer getting eaten alive by a bunch of wolves it's like that's just god and nature and that's it is what it Hmm. is we kind of like look at that and say how terrible it is for the for the deer you know but the wolves are eating so it's like is what is it bad is it good you you know so yeah i don't know i mean i can go on a big long tangent conversation about that but um yeah i guess just the power to kind of just balance things better but again i just feel weird saying that because then it would be like my version of balance and that's not necessarily yeah. correct or appropriate um so i don't know man. you know always, I, that, that's always a hard question for me oh would i fly would i be super strong you know there's these like those are like kind of the basic superpowers mm-hmm. and then i will always try to kind of think outside the box and kind of have something that isn't the cliche or the norm um yeah but it's kind of difficult to uh to kind of define it- that that is a solid answer. That's a very altruistic answer of you. And uh, I appreciate that you took uh, uh, what could have been a silly question uh, and gave some thought and Sorry. some heart into it. I think I think for someone with less morals than you, uh, given the ability to draw anything, could easily become a fucking uh, a weird... Remember that movie, Weird Science? Yeah. Uh, considering that you draw some incredibly bad and bougie uh, uh, you know, uh, characters on your covers, I can imagine someone using that power for evil. But, you know, I'm glad to hear that, that you put some thought into that. I so mean, big shout out. I mean, but I kind of did leave a lot of room, you know, with my answers. Like, oh, like, like what, is, <laughs> what, is balance, what does balance mean to you? Yeah. And does balance yeah. always mean the same thing at every, all, every different time of day? I mean, for what, sure. what, what mood are you in? What kind of balance are, you, are, mm-hmm. are we looking for if you have that power? So, hey, man, that doesn't always mean it's this altruistic, want to fix the world kind of kind of deal. And I feel like that would be an interesting character. My favorite characters are like the antiheroes where they don't. <laughs> Where they're not one thing or the other, they they don't you know they don't have like some main agenda. They just kind of go with whatever needs to be done, and they'll kind of join whatever team they need to in order yeah. to get their their uh, their mission kind of accomplished. Um, and those are the stories I, I kind of like better, where it's not just where you're not one thing all the time because because who mm-hmm. is who is right? Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. So we can kind of leave it there. Yeah, some days uh, I want to draw, you know, world peace. Other days I want a badass yacht so I can go sail sail to Italy. All right, it depends on the mood. All right, Jeff, man, I I, I truly appreciate this conversation. I'm gonna have links to your socials in the show notes. People can check you out on Instagram, on on Twitter. I highly recommend folks uh, check out your website. All of your your covers are on here, and it's just a good time if you're a fan of art. If you just like staring at great art check out the website as well. But do you have anything that you want to plug? Do you have any upcoming projects? Are you going to be at any uh, uh, conventions? Uh, where can people find you? Yeah, just everything is my name. All my social media, jeffdecal.com, jeffdecal Instagram. And when I'm going to be somewhere, I, I post about it. So yeah, just follow me wherever, wherever you, you want. Man. Good stuff. All right, folks. With that being said, uh, do yourselves a favorite. Be on the lookout for everything that Jeff uh, DeCal has got coming up. Um, I wouldn't have had him on the show if I didn't think he was someone that you guys would appreciate or is not worthy of, of following along. He's, he's providing some great artwork and, um, you know, an awesome perspective, as you could tell, in this medium. So if that said, you guys take care and uh, be well, all right? <laughs>